On June the 17th of 2019, authorities released a photo showing an Alabama man pulling a gun during an apparent road rage incident in Fairhope. The incident started at around 2 p.m. on the day in question at a traffic light on Greeno Road when two drivers got out of their respective vehicles and started arguing. The driver of the hatchback jumped onto the hood of the Toyota sedan, smashing the vehicle's windshield with his foot. The driver of the Toyota, 23-year-old Morris Mayo, then got a gun out of his car and pointed it at the other man. In the aftermath, Mayo was arrested on a charge of carrying a pistol without a permit. In an interview, Mayo claimed that the other driver was the instigator and that the man had swerved into his lane and flipped him off. He added that at the time he was driving his pregnant girlfriend to the doctor for a gender reveal. Subsequent information indicated that investigators identified the other man, but it was unclear what charges they'd press against him. Number 19. Janelle Evans 26-year-old Janelle Evans took out a handgun during a road rage incident in April of 2018 while her son was right beside her in their vehicle. In July of 2018, MTV aired footage of the incident on an episode of the reality TV show Teen Mom 2. Part of the episode showed Evans driving on a highway in Bolivia, North Carolina before she slammed on her brakes suddenly, apparently because of another vehicle. The reality star yelled at the other vehicle's driver. She proceeded to reach for her gun under the driver's seat and placed it beside her lap as her son, eight-year-old Jace, was sitting right next to her. At one point, Evans stopped and got into an argument with the other driver, yelling, you were tailgating me, you the other driver was later interviewed and claimed that Evans followed him to his house. As Evans reversed, she accidentally hit the man's mailbox, prompting him to get into his car and trying to block her from leaving. Evans yelled at the man as she pulled out her handgun before managing to drive away. Both Evans and the other driver called 911, but no arrests were made due to conflicting stories and a lack of witnesses. Number 18. Berating a calm motorist. A seemingly calm motorist pointed a pistol at an enraged driver who was yelling at him during a wild road rage incident somewhere in the United States. The New York Post reported about the incident, which was caught on cell phone video by a man who was driving down a highway. Shortly after the footage started, an oncoming sedan with horns blaring aligned at the right side of the man's vehicle. For some reason, the driver of the sedan that had just come into the frame of the footage went on an expletive-laden tirade shouting, Why don't you learn to drive, you He continued yelling at the driver who was recording the video. The latter never uttered a word but flipped his middle finger instead. The belligerent driver got even more enraged as he continued his rant yelling, do something, pull over. The silent driver subsequently pulled out what appeared to be a 9mm handgun and pointed it at his furious adversary who then abruptly hit the brakes. The tires of his vehicle screeched as he shouted in fear saying, oh God. The video of the incident was posted on Facebook and as of November of 2023, it had already garnered 45 million views. Number 17. Traffic Warden vs. Van Driver On August the 16th of 2023, Metropolitan Police were called to Manor Park in London, England, after receiving reports of an altercation between two men. A fight had broken out on Chesterford Road after a traffic warden argued with a van driver, taking photos of the driver's vehicle during the course of the argument. Moments later, the enraged driver grabbed a wooden pole and started attacking the warden, hitting him twice before the stick snapped. Profanities were yelled by one of the men as the brawl spilled out across the road. 
with the traffic warden punching the man to the floor before the fight was broken up by a third man. Upon the responding officer's arrival, they determined that the warden had suffered a minor injury to his finger, which didn't require medical attention. They also learned that the warden's earphones had been broken during the fight. The driver was initially placed under arrest on suspicion of criminal damage and assault causing actual bodily harm. However, after the officer spoke with the victim and the suspect, the conflict was resolved through a community resolution. The victim had agreed to accept payment from the suspect to replace the damaged earphones. He also decided not to proceed with pressing the assault charge. Number 16. Brian Duran Arizona man Brian Duran was accused of pointing a gun at another driver who'd cut him off along a road in Avondale on May the 7th of 2022. Duran had been driving his Dodge Durango alongside a Subaru sedan driven by Francisco Garcia. The Subaru's dash camera showed the Dodge drifting into Garcia's lane. At that point, Garcia decided to go around the Dodge and cut the driver off. He told WSAZ that he'd just gotten his Subaru back after a collision a few months earlier and was trying to avoid getting hit again. Nevertheless, Garcia admitted that he was at fault for what he'd done. Immediately after being cut off, Duran honked his horn, causing Garcia to speed away and avoid a confrontation. However, when Garcia pulled up to a red light at the intersection of McDowell Road and Avondale Boulevard, Duran came to a stop directly behind him. Duran got out of his car and went over to Garcia's window. He pointed a gun at Garcia and yelled at him through the window. The enraged man began punching the window before walking away and getting the Subaru's license plate. After reviewing the dashcam footage, law enforcement identified Duran and later took him into custody. Jail records indicated that the man was eventually found guilty of aggravated assault and disorderly conduct. He was handed a 42-month and 27-month jail sentence respectively for each offense. Number 15. Ricky Thornton A YouTube video posted on January the 30th of 2016 showed the moment a pickup truck driver pulled out a gun and aimed it at a motorcyclist in Henderson, Nevada. The motorcyclist, who was recording the incident, had gone on a group ride with other bikers. During their ride, an unrelated altercation initially took place between one of the riders and another driver of a vehicle. Shortly after, a red Chevrolet truck got involved by flipping the bikers off. The motorcyclist recording the video said he got annoyed and decided to confront the three men inside the red truck as soon as traffic was halted at a red light at an intersection. The biker repeatedly tapped on the right passenger side window of the truck. The front and rear passengers of the truck rolled down their windows, at which point all the occupants of the truck began simultaneously berating the motorcyclist, swearing at him. The biker asked, what did I do? To which the driver of the truck responded by yelling more profanities. After the video was posted on YouTube, it instantly went viral, gaining at least a million views. In the wake of the incident, the driver of the pickup truck, Ricky Thornton, came forward and told Inside Edition that he didn't know if the biker had a gun on him and that he didn't want to take any chances. Thornton claimed that prior to the confrontation, he'd seen several bikers doing stunts, which made him feel uncomfortable. Both Thornton and the biker filed police reports against each other, however, it was unclear if official charges were filed against any of them. Number 14. David Shelton Shortly after 1 p.m. on January the 2nd of 2022, local police were called to the intersection of 43rd and Peoria Avenues in Phoenix, Arizona. A dispatcher had received reports about a driver, later identified as 40-year-old David Shelton, who'd been seen striking other vehicles while waiting at a red light. Eyewitness Michelle Gibbons told azcentral.com 
She'd seen Shelton being the instigator as he rear-ended a green Kia Soul before exiting his black vehicle and shouting at the Kia's driver. During the ensuing confrontation, the driver of a silver sedan yelled at Shelton to calm down. Gibbon said that the suspect then turned his attention to that driver, reached into his vehicle and punched him. The man who just got punched subsequently got out of his silver car brandishing a baton and struck Shelton's vehicle. At that point, Shelton went back to his car and started rear-ending the silver sedan. Moments later, Shelton's car accelerated again, this time towards the driver of the silver vehicle, who consequently avoided being hit by jumping onto the hood of Shelton's car. While on the hood, the man proceeded to stomp on the windshield before safely stepping off. Things got even more hectic from there. A cell phone video recorded by a witness showed the driver of the silver vehicle, who had just avoided being run over, approaching the intersection apparently to go after his dog that had gotten out of his car. As soon as the light turned green and traffic began to flow, Shelton made a sharp right turn and slammed into the man who was still calling for his dog. The victim's body could be seen being launched into the air upon impact and then landing on the ground with a loud thud before getting back on his feet. Fortunately, the victim didn't suffer any life-threatening injuries. In the wake of the incident, law enforcement tracked down Shelton and arrested him on charges of aggravated assault. Assault, aggravated driving while under the influence, failure to give information and violating probation. He was booked into the Maricopa County Jail. Number 13. John Jacob Ellinger 35-year-old Missouri man John Jacob Ellinger was arrested for a brutal road rage attack that left his victim with black eyes and a broken nose, jaw and forehead. The incident transpired on the morning of October the 22nd of 2023, while a male driver was waiting at a red light at the intersection of 10th Street and Clark Avenue in St. Louis. The driver honked his horn at Ellinger, who was plowing through the light in the right turn lane. That is when Ellinger backed up aggressively, got out of his vehicle and approached the driver. He forced the car door open, dragged the man out, punched him and kicked him to the ground before getting back in his truck to flee the scene. The assault was captured on surveillance video which also showed Ellinger chasing another driver who witnessed the attack. He drove up alongside the witness's Land Rover, held the gun outside the window and asked, do we have a problem? The witness drove away, but Ellinger reported he gave chase, pointed the gun at his window and fired as he sped away. Fortunately, the witness wasn't hit. Hours later, Manchester police found Ellinger's truck abandoned, but quickly identified him, for he was on parole at the time. His probation was connected with an unrelated case five months earlier, during which he had slashed the tires of another vehicle. Following the issuance of an at-large warrant in November, Swansea police arrested Ellinger and booked him into the St. Clair County Jail without bond. As of the latest updates, Ellinger was extradited to St. Louis, where he was facing two counts of felony assault and one of armed criminal action. Number 12. Samantha Dennis and Julie Sam, Florida woman Michaela Barboza, was beaten by a pair of baseball bat-wielding women after she cut one of them off while driving on US Route 441 on March the 22nd of 2018. The woman Barboza had cut off was 22-year-old Samantha Dennis, Dennis's sister, 27-year-old Julie Sam, who'd been driving another car nearby, saw what Barboza did and became enraged. Sam followed Barboza's vehicle and when she got near her, she rolled down her window and began yelling at her, you cut off my sister. That's disrespectful, fearing for her safety. Barboza pulled into a parking lot in the 3700 block of West Oakland Park Boulevard in Lauderdale Lakes to try and get away. However, Sam and Dennis had chased after her in their respective vehicles. Barboza got out of her car and was immediately confronted by Sam, who was carrying a baseball bat. Sam berated her, 
and as she got closer to Barboza, she started getting physical. Dennis, who was carrying a baseball bat of her own, quickly approached Barboza and immediately began striking her in the head. At that point, Sam also joined the onslaught. Fortunately, bystanders saw what was happening and intervened, preventing Sam and Dennis from using their bats any further. The sisters then fled the scene, leaving Barboza with a broken nose a concussion, multiple cuts and bruises. Deputies tracked down Dennis after receiving multiple tips from the Broward County Crime Stoppers hotline. The woman was arrested in April of 2018, and a few days after her arrest, Sam turned herself into authorities. Both of them were charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon and were ultimately found guilty of the charge. Sam was sentenced to four years behind bars while Dennis was handed an 18-month jail sentence. Number 11. Robert Marshall On November the 8th, 2023, detectives with the Assault Unit and the Armed Violent Offender Unit in Colorado Springs arrested Colorado man Robert Marshall for felony menacing. The charge against the 23-year-old stemmed from a road rage incident that had occurred on November the 3rd of 2023, near Austin Bluffs Boulevard and Beverly Place, during which a gun had allegedly been fired. Following Marshall's arrest, detectives continued to investigate his suspected involvement in two other shootings. One had occurred on October the 24th of the same year at the intersection of Constitution Avenue and Powers Boulevard, where a victim sustained serious gunshot wounds and survived. In the other incident, he was allegedly involved in a drive-by shooting that took place on November the 4th, near the 3600 block of North Carefree Circle. On November the 13th, Marshall was additionally charged with attempted murder, assault, attempted assault, and two counts of illegal discharge of a weapon. He was held behind bars at the El Paso County Jail on a $500,000 bond. Number 10. Peter Dow Chicago man Peter Dow faced criminal charges after head-butting another driver and repeatedly hitting his car with a knife during a road rage incident that unfolded on January the 16th of 2019. According to law enforcement, Dow claimed that while he was driving his Jeep SUV, a Toyota Camry cut him off near the intersection of Tuhi and Central Avenues in Chicago Skokie. Dow said that both vehicles continued driving until they came to a stop at Lehigh Avenue, where they had to stop because of a passing train. At that point, the driver of the Toyota stepped out and allegedly not only threatened him but also threw a cup of coffee at him before getting back into his vehicle. After the train passed, Dow gave chase, tailgating the Toyota. The driver tried to switch lanes but Dow overtook him in a dangerous maneuver. Dow pulled over directly in front of the Toyota, forcing it to stop near the 6600 block of Milwaukee Avenue. He subsequently got out of the vehicle and brandished a knife before using it to hit the driver's side window of the Toyota. Dow proceeded to take photos of the sedan's license plate, at which point the driver exited the vehicle and confronted Dow. The two men got in each other's faces and Dow was seen bumping into the other driver. Police were later called and Dow was arrested. A witness who recorded the incident provided his footage to the authorities. Shortly after police investigated, Dow was charged with aggravated assault and battery. Number 9. Lee Vogel on the afternoon of June the 16th of 2019, a group of bikers cut off a vehicle in Silverado Canyon, California, and harassed its occupants while seemingly inciting a fight. The vehicle had been driven by Lee Vogel, who was traveling with his girlfriend and young daughter. Vogel said that the incident started shortly after he turned right onto El Toro Road, just as the motorcyclists were merging on from Cook's Corner Bar. As he was quickly approaching the merging bikers, Vogel honked his horn, at which point the bikers just stopped right in front of him, blocking his vehicle from passing. He tried to pull around the bikers, but at the same time they accelerated and cut him off again. A female passenger riding in the back seat of 
One of the motorcycles even gave Vogel the middle finger. The bikers brake checked Vogel multiple times, and when his vehicle finally tapped one of the motorcycles rear, the situation escalated further. The bikers pulled over in the middle of the road, causing Vogel's vehicle to stop. The female bike passenger approached Vogel's vehicle and started berating the family. When Vogel told the group that he had the whole incident on camera, the woman lashed out. She was eventually pulled away by the other bikers, and the family went on their way. Vogel told Inside Edition that the confrontation made him very worried for his family. He added that he had thought that they were going to be pulled out of the car against their will. Number 8. Bradley Turner in February of 2016, North Carolina man Bradley Turner pleaded guilty to several charges for his involvement in a road rage attack that transpired three years earlier. On March the 24th of 2013, Bradley and his wife Christy got into a dispute with another driver and the occupants of a truck on Highway 70, after which Bradley decided to follow the truck to a Newport home. At that point, he got into a fight with the occupants of the truck Bradley was handed a gun by his wife, Christy, and shot into the ground before pointing the firearm at the occupants of the truck. He even shot into the truck, breaking the back window, at which point the victims called 911. Responding officers arrived and arrested Bradley. The 44-year-old later pleaded guilty to felony discharging a weapon into an occupied dwelling, injury to personal property, and assault and battery. The misdemeanor charges against him and Christy were dismissed. Bradley was given a suspended prison sentence of two to three years and was placed on 36 months of supervised probation. The judge ordered him to pay court costs and to pay restitution to the victims. Bradley was also required to undergo anger management classes and was subject to electronic house arrest with an ankle bracelet for the first six months. Additionally, Bradley was prohibited from possessing any weapons. Number 7. Jacqueline Avellino Mendez Jacqueline Avellino Mendez from Fall River, Massachusetts, was indicted on murder, assault and battery with a dangerous weapon after she fatally stabbed another motorist in Brockton. The indictment stemmed from a confrontation that took place at the intersection of Belmont and Grafton Streets on June the 28th of 2019. Attorney Joseph Krauske Jr., who has represented Mendez, described the victim Jennifer Landry as the initial aggressor. Krauske said that Landry had repeatedly braked in front of Mendez as the two were traveling in their respective vehicles along a residential street. Consequently, Mendez honked at Landry, causing the latter to pull over. Landry got out of her vehicle and proceeded to confront Mendez, who also exited her vehicle. The encounter quickly devolved into a physical altercation. A witness saw the women wrestling and throwing punches before Mendez returned to her car saying, I've got something for you, bitch. Mendez grabbed a knife and stabbed Landry before driving away. At that point, police simultaneously received multiple 911 calls regarding the stabbing. A responding officer arrived at the scene and found Landry bleeding heavily from the right side of her neck. The 41-year-old was taken by ambulance to Good Samaritan Medical Center in Brockton. Meanwhile, Mendez showed up at a police station and reported that she'd been involved in an altercation with a motorist. She told officers there was no crash but there may have been a stabbing involved. Mendez was detained and later held without bond after Landry succumbed to her stab wound. After her indictment, the case was moved from Brockton District Court to Plymouth County Superior Court in Brockton, where she pleaded not guilty to the charges. Subsequent information indicated that Mendes was scheduled for a jury trial in late 2023. Number 6. Vegas Road Rage Brawl On September the 21st of 2020, TMZ posted cell phone footage that captured a violent brawl between a pair of young men and an older trio, which ended with the latter taking out a baseball bat. The incident took place in Las Vegas, Nevada, and it was unclear what had sparked the heated confrontation. Video showed the two groups out of their respective vehicles and holding up traffic in the middle of a roadway near the Palace Station Hotel and Casino. What's your problem, bitch? said one of the older men to the younger group. 
a woman who appeared to be accompanying the older men joined the ensuing argument, berating the young group as well. Within seconds, the verbal dispute turned into a two-on-two -two type of fight among the male suspects. According to TMZ, shit really hit the fan when one of the older guys went back to their vehicle, grabbed a bat and started swinging at his rival. That man landed at least one blow before handing the lumber to his partner, who then landed a couple of blows to the other group's vehicle. At one point, even the woman could be seen getting physically involved, using a chain as a weapon. Meanwhile, the guy who was now holding the bat continued swinging it around, at which point the video ended. In the aftermath, authorities were looking into the incident, but updates regarding the identities of those involved and the potential legal ramifications they were facing weren't immediately disclosed. Number 5. Melissa Danielle Johnson on the night of October the 12th of 2023, deputies from the Escambia County Sheriff's Office arrested a Florida woman accused of shooting at a vehicle on Barrancas Avenue in Pensacola, Florida. Though little information regarding the shooting was provided, the victims claimed that it stemmed from a road rage incident. A woman occupying a vehicle had fired a single shot into the victim's vehicle resulted in one of the passengers getting injured and being transported to the hospital. During the investigation, the shooter, 30-year-old Melissa Danielle Johnson, contacted the sheriff's office and identified herself as the suspect, promptly turning herself in. Deputies subsequently searched Johnson's vehicle and located the firearm as well as multiple narcotics. The woman was booked into jail without bond on a slew of charges, including three counts of attempted homicide, discharging a firearm from a vehicle, possession of a controlled substance without a prescription, possession of marijuana, and possession of cocaine. Number 4. Instant Karma Shocking dashcam footage captured the moment a baseball bat-wielding man instigated a fight with another motorist, only to be quickly thwarted with a single well-placed punch. The vicious assault, which only lasted a couple of seconds, took place on an unknown road in the United Kingdom on April the 4th of 2021. The footage showed a teal-colored Peugeot hatchback behind a black vehicle. Both passenger cars had stopped near a wide junction, and almost immediately, a man exited the black vehicle, opened his trunk, grabbed a baseball bat and started threatening the driver of the Peugeot while yelling profanities at him. At that point, the driver of the Peugeot, who was still inside the vehicle, rolled down his window and gestured his hand at the belligerent man. The latter responded by taking a huge swing with the bat, hitting the Peugeot's right front corner. The unnamed driver immediately jumped out of his car and walked towards the thug, who subsequently tried to hit him. Expertly avoiding the swing of the bat, the driver of the Peugeot caught the thug square on the chin, sending him flying into the bushes behind him in what the Daily Mail referred to as a cruel dose of instant karma. A friend of the thug thought he would spring to the rescue and exited from the passenger side, launching himself at the driver. However, he was instantly slammed to the ground, placed in a chokehold, and lost consciousness. After having eliminated the threat, the Peugeot driver rushed back to his car and left the scene. As there were no reported updates, it never became clear what prompted the altercation, who the individuals involved were, or if any charges were pressed in connection with the incident. Number 3. Rafael Rivera a knife-swinging truck driver and a gun-toting motorcyclist faced off in the street during a heated confrontation shortly after 1 p.m. on May the 17th of 2022. The rowdy encounter unfolded in Palm Coast, Florida after 50-year-old Rafael Rivera, who was driving a gray Toyota Tacoma, cut in front of a motorcyclist at the intersection of Pine Lakes Parkway and Whirlaway Drive. When the two vehicles came to a stop, Rivera got out of the truck with a knife in his hands and approached the motorcyclist. The motorcyclist slipped on a pair of brass knuckles and proceeded to exchange expletives with Rivera in the middle of the road. The biker's female passenger, 
started recording the incident, and moments later, Rivera swiped the knife at the biker's face. Consequently, the motorcyclist drew a gun from inside his vest pocket and pointed it at the truck driver, demanding that he put down his knife. At that point, Rivera began retreating. Moments later, Flagler County deputies responded to the scene and detained both men as they investigated. The deputies determined that the motorcyclist had a permit to carry a weapon. After reviewing the footage taken by the passenger and interviewing witnesses, Rivera was arrested for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill. He was taken to the Sheriff Perry Hall inmate detention facility, where he was held without bond. Today's topic was requested by Malachi W392. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Brendan Jones An Australian man drew a gun during a wild road rage incident in Sydney's suburb of Liverpool before he was disarmed by two others in a violent confrontation. The incident occurred when two vehicles, namely a Toyota Corolla and the Suzuki Bellino, stopped near the intersection of Mill Road and Charles Street on the afternoon of April the 17th of 2022. A woman and a man, later identified as Brendan Jones, exited the Toyota and started arguing with the occupants of the Suzuki. Jones walked up to the passenger side of the Suzuki and pointed a handgun through the window. The driver of the Suzuki, 35-year-old Zafar Khan, subsequently got out of his car and elbowed Jones in the face, causing him to fall to the ground unconscious. Khan's passenger, Christian Borello, also exited the vehicle and took Jones's gun. A police statement said that the two men then repeatedly kicked Jones in the head as the latter lay on the side of the road. Khan and Borello went back in their vehicle and fled the scene, bringing Jones's gun with them. Responding police were called to the location, and when they arrived, they found Jones still lying in the gutter, beaten to a pulp. Several hours later, officers discovered the Suzuki in the car park on Hoxton Park Road in Preston's. They learned that the vehicle was a rental and found Khan's ID inside. However, they weren't able to locate the pier. Investigators later released CCTV images of the altercation, seeking information from the public. On June the 15th of 2022, Khan and Borello were arrested at the Mercure Hotel after police received a tip. Both men were charged with a fray. Khan was additionally charged with not disclosing a driver's details to law enforcement. We don't know if he was charged with any crimes for allegedly pulling the gun on the pier. Our release about when supercars go wrong is lined up for you right after number one for those of you who haven't seen that one yet and would like to. Number one, Royd Road Rage. On September the 11th of 2023, 36-year-old Nathaniel Walter Radimak, who was dubbed Tesla Road Rage Guy, was convicted on several felony counts committed during his rampages from 2022 to 2023. Throughout the aforementioned period, he victimized a handful of victims around California in several places, namely Glendale, Pasadena, Atwater Village, Hollywood, West Hollywood, and Echo Park. One of his many viral outbursts occurred on the morning of January the 11th of 2023. Dash cam footage from a car directly following behind the Tesla in question showed both vehicles traveling on the southbound lanes of Highway 2 near York Boulevard in Glendale. The Tesla suddenly stopped, immediately after which the driver, who had his face partially covered, got out carrying a metal pipe. The man approached the car behind him and carried out an unprovoked attack, during which he hit the vehicle several times before driving off from the scene. After news stories about the attack were reported, several individuals who'd been victims also came forward and shared similar photos and videos of their terrifying experience with the same male suspect and Tesla, one of the victims. A 74-year-old woman said that the same man with the same Tesla confronted her and her 93-year-old mother in June of 2022. The woman told KABC that the incident took place in West Hollywood, where she'd seen the Tesla coming into oncoming traffic. She added that she rolled down her window and confronted the man and told him, you can make it, just keep coming slow. 
The woman further stated that the man consequently went into some kind of a psycho mode and started screaming and lashing out. The suspect got out of his car and threw a can at the woman. A valet intervened and tried to calm him down but was instead punched in the face. Surveillance footage showed the man also throwing something at the valet before leaving in his Tesla. After authorities finally identified Rademac, California Highway Patrol officers arrested him at a car wash in Torrance on January the 29th and booked him into the Los Angeles Police Department's 77th jail. The officer found steroids or what was left of them and more than $30,000 in his car. Rademac was sentenced to five years in prison after being found of criminal threats, vandalism, assault, and elder abuse. Number 8. Matthew Heller and Maddie Gilsall In the fall of 2021, TikTok user Matthew Heller uploaded a video of a woman later identified as Maddie Gilsall, berating him after rear-ending his Lamborghini Aventador at a traffic light in Tampa, Florida. The video rapidly went viral, earning tens of millions of views and even being covered by several news outlets. In it, Gil Sol maintained that Heller had hit her car from the front at an earlier time, while the man laughed her off and remarked upon the apparent absurdity of his supercar having struck her Audi from behind. As her boyfriend tried to calm the woman down, Gil Sol continued screaming about her new car and implying that Heller owned a Lamborghini because of white privilege. Heller's clip also showed surveillance footage from a nearby gas station, which seemingly proved that the other driver had plowed into his Lamborghini. Heller was praised by social media users for handling the situation like a gentleman and maintaining his composure in contrast to the other driver's outburst. In light of the video circulation, Gil Sol took to TikTok and posted additional footage, which she claimed proved Heller had been at fault first. The video caught by a nearby doorbell camera showed the supercar moving in front of the Audi at the light, narrowly avoiding a cyclist passing in front. Gil Sol maintained that it was at that moment when Heller swiped her car and then attempted to drive away. In one comment, Gil Sol admitted to have rear-ended the Lamborghini in retaliation for the previous incident. The crash generated a massive conversation across various social media platforms, in which a number of users weighed in on who they believed had been responsible, with some accusing Heller of gaslighting the other driver. Legally, the matter remained unresolved as of the latest updates, although Gil Sol had expressed an intention of suing Heller for slander. Number 7. Elif Aksu Austrian supermodel Elif Aksu, age 25, was arrested in the spring of 2017 for crashing a Ferrari Dino in Ibiza, reportedly while under the influence of cocaine. The supercar, estimated at over $500,000, reportedly belonged to her boyfriend, who was only identified as a 44-year-old Saudi millionaire traveling with a British passport. The accident happened in the evening at a roundabout on the Spanish island where Aksu slammed the Ferrari into a lorry, damaging it on the right front side. No one suffered significant injuries in the crash. Aksu and a male companion, believed to be her boyfriend, abandoned the supercar before local police arrived at the scene. A passerby had reportedly heard them talking about an airplane and alerted the authorities. Officers rushed to a runway at the Codola Airport, where they found a private jet belonging to Aksu's boyfriend being prepared for takeoff an aspect they'd later interpret as the supermodel's attempt to flee the island. She corresponded to witnesses' description of the driver involved in the crash and was detained before boarding the jet. She later tested positive for cocaine and was arrested on suspicion of driving without a license and driving under the influence of drugs. Aksu, who'd worked with some of the world's top modeling agencies, was released on bail after a friend vouched she owned property on the island. Number 6. Roger Wittenburns 82-year-old Gerald Smith was working as an Uber driver in Delray Beach, Florida in 2016, a job that he'd reportedly chosen so that he could afford to buy medicine for his wife Eloise. On September the 21st, Roger Wittenburns, a health club mogul in his early 60s, had been drinking while having dinner with his then-girlfriend at the City Oyster restaurant. He got behind the wheel of his Lamborghini and drove it at 75 miles per hour in a 36 mile per hour roadway near Federal Highway at Northeast 1st Street. He then lost control of the supercar and crashed it into Smith's Buick, killing him. The authorities found that Wittenburn's blood alcohol level had been nearly twice the legal limit, 
He subsequently pleaded guilty to DUI manslaughter and also settled a civil lawsuit filed by Eloise, Smith's widow. As per a plea deal, Witten Burns was sentenced to two years of house arrest as well as 10 years probation, in addition to paying his victim's family $20,000. The initial sentence had involved prison time, but the court commuted it to home detention after taking into account Witten Burns' health as he'd reportedly had three heart attacks and was also suffering from debilitating back pain. In court, he expressed remorse for his actions and took full responsibility for the accident, noting that Smith had driven his car for many years without crashing. Number five, Andy House. Texas man Andy House bought a Bugatti Veyron in October of 2009 and the following month went to drive it on a road next to the Gulf Bay Lagoon. At some point, House drove his $1 million supercar into the water and then left the engine running, which ended up ruining the vehicle as it became infiltrated with salt water. He initially claimed that he'd been distracted by a low-flying pelican before changing his statement to say he was reaching for his cell phone before and then lost control of the supercar. The man's pelican argument was disproven by a 24-second video subsequently uploaded to YouTube, which was captured by a motorist and his friend. They had been driving parallel to the Bugatti and recording the supercar, which one of them initially misidentified as a Lamborghini before claiming, that'll be mine one day. Moments later, the footage shows the vehicle veering off-road and plunging into a shallow saltwater marsh on exit 4, just off Galveston Island. The clip has since been viewed over 9 million times on YouTube and in the incident's aftermath. The two friends promptly called 911. It later emerged that House had insured the Bugatti for $2.2 million and evidence presented in court suggested he'd purposefully driven it into Gulf Bay. He eventually pleaded guilty to insurance fraud and was sentenced to over a year in federal prison. Number 4. Trevor Heitman On August 23rd of 2018, YouTube gamer Trevor Heitman, better known as McSkillet, drove his McLaren 650S in the wrong direction down I-805 Hove in San Diego, California. He reached a speed of roughly 100 miles per hour before crashing head-on with a 2010 Hyundai SUV, which was driven by a woman in her 40s and had her daughter as a passenger. Both vehicles erupted into fireballs on the roadway in the collision's aftermath. An 18-year-old Heitman was killed instantly, as were the Hyundai's occupants. A few other motorists and passengers were reported to have suffered injuries in the crash, but not to a life-threatening degree. The McLaren, which the YouTuber had featured in a video earlier in the year, was shown completely engulfed by flames in footage captured at the scene. Roughly 30 minutes earlier, Heitman had reportedly rammed his supercar through the gates of Ashley Falls Elementary School in Carmel Valley, but fortunately no one was hurt. According to his parents, a few days before the horrific crash, Heitman had told him that he was having a meltdown. It was reportedly related to him being banned from trading in-game items associated with the popular video game Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which meant he lost around $100,000 in virtual inventory. Number 3. Saqib Hussein On August the 26th of 2013, Saqib Hussein was speeding through Hall Green, Birmingham, England, in a borrowed Audi R8 Spider. Roughly half an hour before midnight, 25-year-old Hussein was driving at nearly twice the speed limit on a residential street. Sisters Mary and Noreen Ryan, aged 60 and 49 respectively, had been returning from a family birthday party. Hussein plowed into their Ford Fiesta, mangling it to such a degree that the roof had to be cut off to release the two women. The accident was captured by nearby surveillance cameras and it left Noreen in critical condition. She was rushed to a local hospital but pronounced dead on arrival. Mary, who'd been driving, suffered a chipped spine, punctured lung, broken pelvis and broken ribs, but ultimately survived. Hussein initially fled the scene, reportedly telling a barely conscious Mary, I'm sorry, it's not your fault, it's mine. His passenger, Faisal Wahid, also fled after sustaining a broken cheekbone, jaw and eye socket, injuries that left him paralyzed on the left side of his face. Hussein surrendered to the authorities and about a year after the crash, pleaded guilty at Birmingham Crown Court to causing death by dangerous driving and whilst uninsured. The IT worker was sentenced to six years in prison and banned from driving for six years, after a judge had called him a danger to everybody on the road. The judge also argued that Hussein had been showing off, even though he'd claimed to have 
wanted to test out the capabilities of what he described as his dream car. Number 2. Stefan Eriksson In the 1990s, Swedish man Stefan Eriksson, who'd started out as an auto body shop worker, became the leader of the notorious Uppsala Mafia based in the eponymous city about 40 miles from Stockholm. The group was responsible for high-profile, violent crimes rarely before seen in the country. Ericsson later became associated with the UK-based company Gizamondo, which aimed to lead the market in handheld gaming consoles until it became insolvent in 2005. A luxury vehicle enthusiast, Ericsson was involved in a supercar crash in Malibu, California on February the 21st of the following year. He slammed a Ferrari Enzo, then valued at $2 million, into a utility pole while driving at close to 200 miles per hour. The impact was so powerful that the supercar, of which only 400 were made, was cut cleanly in half. Remarkably, neither Ericsson nor his passenger, later determined to have been Irish-born American man Trevor Carney, suffered any significant injuries. The existence of a videotape shot from inside the Ferrari was confirmed by investigators, and it reportedly showed the speedometer given the 199 mile per hour reading prior to malfunctioning due to the impact. When the authorities found the two men at the scene, they claimed to have been uninvolved in the crash, but it was later proven that they'd been lying. A whirlwind of charges ensued after it emerged that the Enzo, along with four other luxury vehicles allegedly handled by Ericsson, had been unregistered and illegally exported to the US. The supercars totaling over $10 million had been leased in Britain where payments for them had ceased. Ultimately, Ericsson avoided the auto theft charge and instead pleaded guilty to two counts of embezzlement and one count of illegal gun possession for a Magnum pistol found during the search of his Bel Air home. He accepted a plea bargain for three years in jail and deportation. Number 1. Daniel Silva on the evening of May the 10th of 2020, celebrity tattoo artist Daniel Silver was driving his 2020 McLaren 600LT through North Hollywood, Los Angeles, with YouTuber Corey LaBarry as a passenger. The pair had celebrated the latter's 25th birthday at a party earlier in the evening, and sources reported that both men had been drinking. Silver lost control of his high-performance car at around 9.39 p.m. and crashed into a tree before also hitting a street sign. The tattoo artist, who'd appeared on the 10th season of the reality show Ink Master, reportedly attempted to flee the scene of the crash but was stopped by witnesses. The Barry and Silver were taken to a local hospital where the former was pronounced dead. Even though there were reports that Silver had been driving while intoxicated, no DUI charge was ever laid against him. He was first charged with second-degree murder, but eventually pleaded guilty to one felony count of gross vehicular manslaughter. On August the 25th of 2020, he was sentenced to one year in prison, followed by five of formal probation and 50 hours of community service. Thanks for watching. Would you rather attend anger management classes every week for two years or spend a week in Supermax? Let us know in the comments section below.